we more and more rely on the cloud for everything. They're using the cloud for storing our data, for using apps, for accessing services, because this is very convenient. At the same time, what we see are data breaches. And that can be very damaging for users because the data that is leaked can be private or sensitive. One way to address that issue would be to rely on fully homomorphic encryption or FHE. What is exactly FHE? So FHE is encryption, meaning that there is a key to encrypt and to decrypt. But there is more. So there is also public evaluation key that allows anyone, given the encryption of X, to get the encryption of F of X. And what you see now is that everything is end-to-end -end encrypted. So data is encrypted at rest, during transit, and even during its processing. So in the case of a data leakage, so at best, the attacker would get access to encrypted data. In the setting I'm showing here, so you see that the same key is used for encryption and decryption, but of course, so we can do the same in the public key setting. And in the case of FHE, so there is a very efficient way to convert any secret key uh, FHE into a public key one. The main issue, so if you want to build or to use FHE is the noise. So today, all known instantiation of FHE make use of noisy ciphertext. And this is for security reason. And the thing is that if the noise present in a ciphertext becomes too high, so at some point, so the ciphertext won't uh, no longer be decryptable. So it's very important to control the noise. And there are no ways to do that. So here is just an example. So assume that there is some uh, private data X and you'd like to compute K times X. So there are several approaches. The, the basic one would be to first get the encryption of X. So ENC in this case is an FHE. And then you compute k that uh, times that uh, ciphertext, and that gives you the, the uh, encryption of k times x. But there is another way. So instead, what you could do is first to decompose k, so the scholar, then you obtain all the ciphertext of b to the i times x. So b is the radix uh, used for the decomposition. Then you combine all the ciphertext to what you do, you compute a multisum and the weight of that multisum are just the digit of that decomposition. And I mean, that's quite easy to see. So that will also give you the encryption of K times X. So what's the advantage of the second approach uh, compared to the first one? So the main advantage is the noise. So in the first case, so if we look at the noise in the resulting ciphertext. So we see that it is proportional to K square. Whereas in the second approach, the noise becomes proportional to the square of E digits. So when you take uh, the sum and that quantity, so the second one is smaller than the first one. So we're getting the noise so second approach is uh, much better. So what I'd like to do in this talk is to find the best possible decomposition so as to, to, to minimize that quantity. So that quantity, so the sum of the square of the digit is called the Euclidean weight. And the goal is to find a decomposition that minimizes that value. So in this case, the digit can be positive or negative. So in the range minus B minus one up to B minus one. And actually, so we already know a couple of other um, pretty good decomposition. So for example, when the radix is equal to two, 
So you knew that we know that the NAF, so the non-adjacent firm, so that one has the maximum number of uh, zero digit into its decomposition. So you cannot uh, get something better. In the case of an odd XB, so what we know is that if you decompose an integer in the range minus b minus one over two up to b minus one over two, so in that case, so the form is balanced and the weight is also, uh, we can show that minimally in that case. So the difficult case is when b is even and larger than two. But here is a very useful observation. So assume that you are given such a decomposition, so in red XB, what you can do, so you can flip one digit. So for example, I can flip that one. So I just take the opposite value. And for that, so we just have to propagate the sign of that digit to the next digit. So here is an example. So take for example, B equal to four. So two, two, is a valid decomposition for 10. So if you now we flip that digit, so the first two, so we get another valid decomposition for 10, so two minus two and one. But you can also flip the first digit, so the, the, the least significant digit, in which case you get minus two, minus one and one. And actually, so we can show that that last form has a minimal Euclidean weight. So what does that example tell us? So what we'd like to do is when we have a two followed by another two or a two followed by a minus two, what we'd like to do is just to flip the digit. And actually, I mean, that's a pretty good intuition and the way to get enough is almost doing that. So just flipping the digit. So when it is a B over two or a larger value, depending on the next digit. So this is the general recording algorithm. So the input is some integer k and the output is the BNAF of k. So just a decomposition of k, so using digits in the set minus b over two up to b over two. So to, you see that there is a while loop and at each iteration, so what we do, so we extract one digit of the value of scalar k, then we update scalar k, and then depending on some condition, so we will flip the digit or not. So again, so let's take a look first at, at our special uh, cases. So first, when b is odd, so a radix that is odd. So in this case, so the selling of B over two is covered by that case. So in that case, so that condition becomes simpler and we just get that. And this is actually the, the way to get the balanced form for B being odd. Another case, so when B is equal to two, so in this case, so digits cannot be larger than one strictly larger than one. And so only the second clause of the condition uh, will apply. So if we now take a look at that one, so this is equal to one when B is equal to, to two, and this is also equal to one. So what does that mean? It means that if the digit we get is a one and that the next one, we also be a one, then we'll flip. So it means that that one becomes minus one. When you update K, so K will become even. And at the next iteration, you see that you'll get digit equal to zero. So just taking mod two operation. So what does that mean? It means that if you have a one followed by another one, then in the next iteration, what you get is a minus one followed by a zero. And so, you see that the non-agency form is what we get because the product of two adjacent digits 
will be always equal to zero in all cases. Okay. So that's the general case so when B is even. So in that case, we need the two clauses and we'll flip when the digit is larger than the basis over two or when the value is the setting of B over two and the next digit is larger than uh, the basis over two. So this is the general recording um, algorithm to get a BNAF. So it works for any integer and any radix B. So you see that it's pretty efficient and actually quite easy to get the BNAF decomposition of an integer K. So what we show in the paper, and this is really the, the main result, is that every integer has a NAF, so we have an algorithm, and that NAF is unique. And more importantly, so we prove that the BNAF has the minimal Euclidean weight among all modified radix presentation. So meaning all representation using assigned digits. So you cannot do better. We also uh, studied the distribution of the digit. So assume that you have a uniformly random BNAF. And if you take one digit Ka prime in uh, that uh, sequences of digits, so it will uh, satisfy that distribution. So you see that digit zero has an occurrence probability that is higher. Digit B over two or minus B over two has a lower occurrence probability. And all the other digits have a probability of uh, one over B to occur. When the radix is odd, so you see that all digits are equiprobable. So from that, so we did compute the expectation. And what is nice is that uh, the, the expectation is equal to zero. So it means that uh, we have a centered distribution. And we also computed uh, the variance, which is given by this expression. So in the paper, so you can also uh, see uh, the exact distribution of uh, an n-digit integer. Actually, we can uh, extend what we have done for integer to modular integer. And this is essentially the same result. So we can get the modular BNAF from the integer BNAF. And again, so we can prove that BNAF exists are unique, so this is almost uh, correct. So from that definition, so you see that when the first recorded digit is B over two or minus B over two, then you can flip the digit. So in that case, there are two possible BNAF. And we also have that important property that the BNAF has minimal Euclidean weight. And this is key, uh, for application. So the, that property, so that's the, the minimal Euclidean weight, so can be used in many, many applications. So in this case, I'll focus on FHE. So something that is used in FHE to control the noise is to uh, make use of a gadget decomposition. So this is just a way to decompose a scholar into uh, some radix uh, based uh, decomposition. And in the case of LWE ciphertext, so what really matters is the Euclidean weight. So we have to get the smallest possible value for that weight to get the best uh, possible noise control. And because the BNAF is optimal, so what we have to choose for that uh, inverse transformation corresponding to the gadget decomposition is uh, to use that uh, BNAF construction. 
One application of that gadget decomposition is the key switching. So key switching is just a way to convert a ciphertext under a key into another one using another key and possibly another uh, set of parameter. And this is done uh, using key switching keys that are just encryption of key digits that are then uh, scaled by a pro of B. So using that uh, gadget decomposition. And again, so because BNAF is optimal, so this is a very uh, good way uh, to, uh, to limit the noise uh, when doing that uh, key switching operation. Another operation, so FFT. So as you know, FFT is a very good way to get fast polynomial multiplication. And uh, what has been observed is that when the representation is balanced, which is the case for BNAF, so all the error relating to uh, floating point arithmetic are lower. And so this is then useful uh, to use FFT, so which is, for example, used in few or in TFHE. Uh, so to use those uh, BNAF just uh, to get a reduced value of the round of uh, error. So uh, to conclude and uh, as a summary, so what we uh, saw in this talk are that new form, so the BNAF, uh, we show that the NAF always exists and is unique, that it is optimal. So meaning that the Euclidean weight is uh, minimal. We also saw the digit distribution and we did cover a couple of cryptographic application. So if you want to know more on the topic, so I just invite you to check out the paper that is available on ePrint. Thank you. <laughs>